Hello everyone, sorry about that. This is ARG and we have some more Franchise uh, Key Manager 9 today and of course we are still playing with the Hartford Whalers. So last time out I made that huge trade, right? We got Mark Missy, Glenn, Glenn Anderson and Paul Coffey from the Orders. So today obviously we do not have a big trade like that. Or do we? No, we don't. That would have been pretty cool, but uh, I feel like one mega trade like that uh, in one calendar year is probably enough, you know. Alright, so, you know, December was kind of a mixed bag, right? So we had all of the, the excitement from that big trade that I made. We had, you know, oh, Paul Coffey. Did you know that Paul Coffey is the only player, defenseman, that came really close to beating Bobby Orr's record? for most points by a defenseman with 138 Bobby Orr is first with 139 right Paul Coffey as a defenseman scored 138 points and I believe 40 something of those were goals as a defenseman oh times sure have changed since but uh, it's still pretty cool to reminisce like that a little bit all right, so uh, yeah, it was a, a little bit of a mixed bag. We had the excitement of the trade, and then I think we got a couple wins, and then we started to lose again. And you know, we still don't have a very good record. We're 12, 23, and one, uh, heading into 1981, and we are eight in the conference. I still think that okay despite the losses okay if you're kind of young and you don't know much about the history of the nhl okay you're gonna need to trust me the trade that i made is going to make us real contenders soon probably not this year because the guys are so really young but soon we should become contenders i need goaltending and a little bit more scoring on the wings. We talked about that already. So maybe I'm gonna put that on my summer shopping list or something. So we are entering 1981 now, and we will be having, it looks like a fairly, fairly busy month actually. And another Western trip where we don't play all of the Western teams. So I don't know what that's all about. Back in the 80s, they didn't really care about, you know, making travel something that made sense for hockey teams. So we still have Paul Coffey, that's day-to-day. -day, and then we have Chuck Leffley, that's also day-to-day. -day. We're going to go ahead and advance one day. And then we're going to be able to play our first game of 1981. That's going to be against the Montreal Canadiens. Right. Owner confidence update. Howard Baldwin is satisfied with the team's performance this season. We're in the rebuilding process. Think carefully before adding veterans to the roster at the expense of giving our young guys playing time. Okay, so we're, we read that already before. Taking a longer view, we're not expecting to be a serious contender next season, but we aren't planning on a total rebuild either. The fans aren't thrilled. Opinion among them is split on your performance. We agree with that the approach you've taken with the team is the correct one. Oh, so I'm starting to win them over. They're like, uh, yeah, I guess that Mark Messi uh, and Paul Coffey guys are kind of all right. You know, I, I guess. Now let me get back to my whiskey. Okay, and Chuck Leffley says that he's ready. I think that I had kept him on the rod. Yeah, all right. And Paul Coffey will need to be recalled uh, whenever he's ready, not now. All right, so we could use him because we're about to play against the Montreal Canadiens. All right, so Montreal is 21, 11, and 5. That's good for second in the conference. Oh, surprise team at the top there is the Minnesota North Star. Oh, it's actually a three-way tie. Oh, God, the... Yeah, the standings are really tight for the first four teams. That's crazy. Whew. All right, so we are 0-1 against Montreal this season. They did beat us 4-3 in Montreal. Let's see if we can beat them at home. That would be pretty sweet. We still have the, the sour taste of defeat in our mouths from the you know them beating us in the playoffs last season. So, yeah. All right, so it looks like they're going to continue playing Mark Messi at left wing. I'm not sure that I agree with that, but it is what it is. All right, let's advance that. Now Montreal is going to go with the goaltender they acquired in the offseason, Bob Soley, and we're going to go with John Garrett, and of course, go waiters go. 
And hopefully we have a winning month. Oh, oh, the burn. We won 7-2 against the Montreal Canadiens. Maybe that uh, they were, you know, celebrating a little too heavily in Hartford for the new year or something. And they weren't up to, uh, to shape. We beat them 7-2 fair and square. I love that. So our, we outshot them 31 to 28 in that game. Mike Rogers was the first star of the game. He had a goal and three assists. Wilf Payment was the second star with four assists. And Mark Messi was the third star with two goals and an assist. 9,066 people in attendance for the game. Mike Rogers opened up the scoring in the first from Mark Messi and Bob Stevenson. Then Rick Aduono from Wilf Payment and Chuck Lifley. And then Mark Messi scored his 20th of the season on the power play from Wilf Payment and Mike Rogers. 3 0 Hartford after one. We add a fight between Bill Bennett and Brian Maxwell as well. Then in the second period, the Montreal Canadiens scored. It was 3 1, and then we scored three more goals. Chuck Lefley scored unassisted, then Darren Veitch from Wilf Payment and Mike Rogers, and then Glenn Anderson from Jordy Douglas and Rob Ramage. 6 1 Hartford after two. Then in the third period, Guy Lafleur scored on the power play for Montreal, made it 6 2 Hartford, and then Mark Missy scored from Mike Rogers and Wolf Payment, 7 2 Hartford. That's our final score. We also had a fight between Rob Ramage and Mario Faubert. Nice win against the Habs. That always makes me happy. And it's the first game of the stream, you know? I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we're gonna have a good day today. Yeah? Oh. Oh, Matty Agman got hurt in the game, too. See, those those Habs, they, they, they just can't play clean. Oh, he's hurt. Oh, with delayed treatment for Agman. He has an elbow strain. It's a one to two months injury. Yes, it's the 80s. He's playing with the injury. Open ice leads to a productive night for Wilf Payment, as we saw. He had four assists. Pretty good game. We've been struggling to score goals, so that's a that's a nice victory. I like it a lot. Right, and then we don't have a whole lot of time to celebrate that. We are uh, flying to New York to play against the Islanders for the very next day, where Mike Bussey extended his goal streak to nine games with a goal and an assist, and that was 23 straight games with a point. Are we going to be the team that stops him? That would be pretty awesome. Coach report on new players, Randy Ward and Denis Seal are feeling a little bit better, I suppose. And Edmonton has put Greg Shepard on the block. Alright, so the Islanders are 23, 13, and 4. Uh, and we are 1 and 2 against them this season. So we did beat them before. It would be nice to beat them again. Let's see. Oh, Matty Agman is just not gonna play. He's hurt, and they're not putting him in the lineup. Al Smith is gonna be back in net for Hartford. Billy Smith is gonna be in net for the Islanders. Watch your, watch your backs. Oh, that's a five-three loss. Uh, that that was a tough. Uh, like, in real life, I don't know, I could go and Google it, but I don't know what the Whalers did in real life for those two games, but that was a tough assignment, playing the Abs and the Islanders back-to-back. -back. Uh, yeah, that, that probably wasn't an easy task at all. We were outshot 28-22 to 22 in that one. Dave Lumley was the first star of the game. He had two goals and two assists. Gordy Roberts was the second star with an assist, and Merrick was the third star with two assists. So we actually opened up the scoring in that one. Rob Ramage scored from Glenn Anderson and Nick Fultziu, and then Wilf Payment scored on a power play from Mike Rogers and Rick Aduano. It was 2-0 Hartford at that point, but the Islanders tied the game before the end of the period, and it was 2-2 after one. And we had a fight between Jamel and Brian Baltimore. Then in the second period, the Islanders scored two goals. I think we, yeah, we did stop Mike Bussey. We didn't win the game, but we stopped Mike Bussey. He doesn't have a point in that game. 
Right, so 4 2 Islanders after 2, and then in the third period, Brent Sutter scored from Gordy Roberts and Bill Bennett. Uh, we came back to within one, but then with 27 seconds left to go in the game, they scored one more goal, and it was a 5 3 Islander win. Right, so Gilles Gilbert has been put on waivers by the Flames, and Neil Komadoski has been put on waivers by Toronto. So, uh, Mike Bussy's point streak ended at 23 games. We held him scoreless. Pete Malovlich has racked up 300 goals in his career. He had a goal and an assist against the Pittsburgh Penguins. Pete Malovlich is 34 years old and he is a three and a half star player. Real Clouty extends his goal streak to six games with a goal against the Buffalo Sabres. And there was a trade between Boston and Calgary, which was a very big trade. Uh, Dick Redman and Gilles Gilbert went to the Flames for Willy Platt in a sixth round draft pick. Oof. The Flames. Uh, yeah, they got the upper hand on that trade. But now Gilles Gilbert is going through waivers, which makes no sense, and I think I might claim him. Maybe not. He's a little old. I wish he was a little bit younger. If he was a couple years younger, I'd pounce on him, but he's 31. I might regret not claiming him. What do I do? He's having a good season. Maybe he can be a stop gap for a couple years. I, I plan on claiming him and passing Al Smith through waivers because Al Smith has been terrible. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and delete that here and we'll put a claim on him. All right. When is his birthday? When's your birthday, man? Oh, you're about to turn 32. Yikes. And I have only one slot, uh, one contract, right? Unless I lose Al Smith on waivers afterwards. You know what? I'm going to put a claim on him and I might not even get him. So. All right. We'll see if I live to regret this decision. That would be absolutely the only decision in my life that I regret taking, right? I I have no regrets. Nobody has regrets ever, right? All right, so we have three days off, and as we fly out west to go play the Kings. Oh, we did get him. That's fine. All right, Sabres Martin suspended. Rick Martin was suspended with Buffalo. He, he will miss seven games. Yikes. Oh, but before he got suspended and did something dirty, he managed to get three goals and an assist against Minnesota. Real Clouty extends his goal streak to seven games with a goal against the Rangers, and we claimed Gilles Gilbert. All right, so that means Al Smith is going. Now let's see if uh, Al Smith gets claim. If he gets claim, I still have that one roster, you know, contract slot that I might use for another goaltender. That one hopefully younger. We'll see. I, I don't even know that he's gonna get claim. All right, so another day off. I don't think he did. Strong night for Bob McMillan with uh, Calgary. He had a hat trick against the Kings. There was no stopping Mo Manta with the Kings, who had a hat trick in that same game. Do we still have Al Smith? Yeah, we do. Oh, he's not too happy, huh? Yeah, sorry, buddy. I guess I can put you on the trading block if that makes you happier maybe somebody's gonna offer me something for you yeah that's his last year of contract too so let's put him on the on the block there you go all right one more day off and then we're gonna be in la to play the kings 
Brent Peterson is back from suspension in Detroit. He's back in the lineup over there. Joel Quenville is back from suspension in Toronto. And Real Clouty extends his goal streak to eight games with a goal that assist against the St. Louis Blues. Right, we are in LA to play the Kings. They are 9, 27, and 4. That's good for ninth in the conference. We are 0 into it against the Kings. We struggled against them when they were dead last. Now, let's see if we can maybe redeem ourselves a little bit here. Oh, Gilles Gilbert gets the start with his new team to face Richard Braleur. Go, Artford, go, come on. A 5-4 win. That's the Gilles Gilbert effect. That's what's going on. I had a 5-4 win on the road against the Kings. We were outshot 39-36 in that one. Wilf Payment was the first star of the game. He had a goal and an assist. Marcel Dion was the second star with two goals. And Bo Berglund was the third star with a goal. So the King scored twice in the first period. They were up 2-0 after one. We had a fight between Doug Allward and Rob Ramage. Then in the second period, the Kings made it 3 nothing, and then we scored four unanswered goals. Bo Berglund scored his fifth from Brent Sutter and Nick Fulsu, then Jay Wells from Glenn Anderson. Then Wilf Payment scored on a power play from Rob Ramage and Mark Messier. Then Mike Rogers from Wilf Payment and Brian Baltimore. 4-3 Hartford after two. In the third period, Gordy Roberts made it 5-3 from Glenn Anderson and Mark Messier. Then the King scored, made it 5-4, but that's, that was it. We won. A few fights here in the third. Al Angsleben fought his former teammate Bill Bennett, and then Gary Rissling fought Jay Wells. All right, nice win on the road, but now Greg Carroll is a route. Let's see. Oh, lots of players have been put on waivers. We're going to take a quick look at that. I don't see any goaltenders, though. So. Uh, Real Clouty extends his goal streak to nine games. He had a goal against the Buffalo Sabres. <coughs> Paul Coffey is about to come back. And Gilbert Perro extended in Buffalo for... They don't say. Sounds to me like six years. No, five. That would be five years, I think. That sounds about right. It's for five or six years. Anyway. He extended. Alright, let's take a look at all those waivers here. Alright, so Jim Meyer. Oh, Lyle Moffat again. <clears throat> then John Winsick. Then Bill Nyrup, Brian Maxwell, Gould, Terry Murray. Yeah, there's nothing for us in there. All right, we're going to go ahead and uh, we have a day off. We're going to sip that day. Oh yeah, that's true. Greg Carroll is our, I need to take a look at that. I have quite a few injuries now. All right, so great night for Paul Ongren. He had four assists against the St. Louis Blues. Memorable game for Ken Lindsman, the Rat. He had four goals and an assist in that same game. Lyle Moffat was claimed from the Pittsburgh Penguins up to Edmonton, and we're about to play Edmonton. Paul Coffey is almost completely recovered, and Jordy Douglas as well. Let's take a quick look here. All right, so Carol can't play, Eduardo can play, Douglas can play. Yeah, we're good. We're good. All right, so we are in Edmonton to play the Orders. Uh, orders are now 20, 13, and 5. Uh, we are 1 0 oh, 1 against Edmonton this season. Do they have Markow back? Yeah, he's there. He has five points in eight games since being traded, so for some reason he seems to be producing better in Edmonton. That's probably, you know, a direct link to playing with Wayne Gretzky. 
right, let's see if we can beat Edmonton as well. Gilbert back in net for the Waiters, Eddie Mio in net for Edmonton, and of course, go Waiters, go. Oh, we lost that one 7-4. We were hot shot 39-27, Wayne Gretzky was the first star of the game, he had a goal and two assists, Charlie Uddy was the second star with an assist, and Wire was the third star with an assist. We opened up the scoring in the first, with payment scored his 15th of the season from Gordy Roberts and Mark Messi, then Bob Stevenson from Brent Sutter and Jordy Douglas. It was 2-0 Hartford at that point. Uh, Oilers did score. It was 2-1 Hartford after one. We had a fight between Pat Price and Jay Wells. Then in the second period, Edmonton tied the game, and then Hartford came back on top. Jordy Douglas scored from Gary Doak and Bob Stevenson. It was 3-2 Hartford after two. Dave Hunter and Jay Wells uh, got into a fight. And in the third period, Edmonton tied the game, and then we took the lead again. Mike Rogers scored on a power play from Mark Messi and Jordy Douglas. It was 4 3 Hartford, and then the wheels fell off the, the wagon there. Uh, Edmonton scored four straight goals, and we lost 7 4. Oh, Rob Ramage got hurt. That that could be bad. Depending how long he's gone. He's day to day. Okay. Whew. Whew. Ramage day to day with injury. All right. Pierre Lagouche extends his goal three to five games. He had a goal against the Rangers. Bill De Derlago. Every time I see that guy, that guy's name, I'm thinking about Brad Dalgarno. So I almost always say Dar Dar <laughs> Dalgarno instead of Derlago. Uh, yeah, all tongue twister. All right, so Bill Derlago extends his goal streak to five games with a goal against the Jets. Jordy Douglas almost completely recovered. Uh, Don Marcotte has been put on the block by the Leafs. And we have a trade proposal from the Calgary Flames. Do they want Taz Smith? That would be funny. And they do. <laughs> oh yeah, you know, oh we fucked up uh, that guy that we put on waivers. Uh, I think we needed him after all. They're offering Murray Bromwell, which is, yeah, no, I don't think I'm gonna make that trade. Yeah, Murray Bromwell didn't play for very long in the league. I'm gonna wait out. I think I, might, I can maybe get better than that for Azmit. So we're gonna wait. There, there's never a very strong goalie market, so, so maybe I'm gonna regret not jumping on that. All right, what, the, what do we look like here? Rob Ramage can play, but Brian Baltimore can. Yeah, we're so good. All right, now we are in Winnipeg to play the Jets. Jets are 10, 26, and 5. Despite that bad record, we are 0-2 against them. We have not been able to beat them. Let's beat them this time. I have a good feeling. Or maybe it's just the AC that just kicked in. I don't know. John Garrett is going to be in net for the Waiters. Andy Moog is going to be in net for the Jets. And of course, go Waiters, go. And we lost 3-2. All right. So we still have some woos going on, uh, moving into 1981, but I promise that one day it's going to turn around. And also I need Paul Coffey in the lineup. I really liked Paul Coffey as a kid, so I'm really stoked to have him on the team. Uh, in case you couldn't tell. Alright, so we lost 3 to 2. Winnipeg outshot us 32 26. Dave Christian was the first star of the game. He had two assists. Uh, Bob Stevenson was the second star with a goal and an assist. And Lindstrom was the third star with two assists. No scoring in the first, but we had a fight between Rick Lee and Nick Fotsu. Then in the second period, Glenn Anderson opened up the scoring. That was his tenth of the season from Nick Fotsu and Bob Stevenson. Then the Jets tied the game, and then Bob Stevenson scored unassisted. It was 2-1 Hartford, and then Maurice Lukowicz scored twice for the Jets. 
It was 3-2 Winnipeg after two. Nobody scored in the third. We had uh, Dave Oida and J. Wells 5, and that was it. Ooh, Glenn Anderson, Bob Stevenson, and Darren Veitch are hurt. Hello, franchise hockey manager. Nice to see you again. All right, let's uh, let's see the uh, they're all day to day. Let's see the kind of mess that the computers put me in. That's crazy. All right, Real to take Sanchez goes straight to ten games. He had two goals against the Montreal Canadiens. Real to take Sanchez points straight to twelve games with that performance. Boston's McTavish suspended, so Craig McTavish is going to miss two games. Greg Carroll is almost back. Oh, return close for Paul Coffey. And then a trade proposal from the Pittsburgh Penguins. Who want to trade me Bennett Wolf for down Alsi. Now, I may, I don't know if I'm going to make that trade. Bennett Wolf. I never heard of this guy. Oh, he did play a little bit in the NHL, but uh, very briefly. And it was... Uh, Yeah, he might develop. Eh, he's a he's a little too far off, I think. I mean, he, I know he's only 21. I don't think it's happening. I'm gonna reject that. Down Alice seems to be like very popular or something. So eventually, there's gonna be something that's offered to me that I'm gonna be like, okay, let's do that one. And I'm gonna advance one more. Look at all those injuries. Morris Titanic has been put on waivers by the orders. That's a very uh, <laughs> ominous name. <laughs> I don't know what to call it. Uh, no missed time for Edmonton's Dave Hunter, not suspended. Real Cloutier sends his goal streak to 11 games with a goal against the Orders. Think about it. Real Cloutier has scored in 11 straight games. That's pretty impressive. And it was 13 straight games with a with a point for him. Greg Carroll is almost recovered. Paul Coffey is recovered. That's good. Jordy Douglas is back. That's also good. And there was a trade between the Oilers and the Sabres. John Gould goes to Buffalo for Dale Krentz and Morris Titanic that we just saw that is going through waivers. All right, let's see if we can figure out what's going on. Okay, Carol can play her. Okay, so I don't need a forward. Um, I might, yeah, I might need to. I might need to put Veitch on one. Two. Yeah. I'm gonna put Veitch on injured reserve. And I'm gonna get Paul Coffee back. So that way I don't have to recall somebody. And now I have just enough people to play my game against the St. Louis Blues. All right, so we are playing the Blues. Uh, they are 18, 19, and five. Uh, we are one and one against the Blues this season. All the games were in St. Louis. Now we are hosting them for the first time. All right, so we have a bunch of injuries, but we're able to field a or ice a, a full team. See what happens here. Uh, the Blues are going to go with Mike Liot. We're going to go with Gilles Gilbert, who, uh, being the sentimental, sentimental guy that he is, he's going to play this game with his Flames jersey that he got to, you know, didn't even get to wear for one game. What a traitor. All right. Go, waiters, go. Not Flames. Go, waiters, go. 
Uh, we lost three to one, probably because Gilles Gilbert confused everybody with the jersey that he was wearing. Uh, we were out shot 32 to 30. Crumbine was the first star of the game. He had an assist. Uh, Duono was the second star with a goal. And Lapointe was the third star with a goal. 8,560 people in attendance for this game. Rick Duono was the first one to score from Nick Fultu and Bill Bennett. It was 1 nothing Hartford at that point, but uh, St. Louis tied the game. It was 1 1 after 1. Then in the second period, St. Louis scored twice. It was 3 to 1. Blues after 2. And nobody scored in the third. So a 3 1 victory for the Blues. So we're not having a very good month again. Uh, Bill Stewart has been put on waivers by the Buffalo Sabres. No missed time for Colorado's uh, Gary Croteau. He was not suspended. Greg Carroll is completely recovered. Uh, Bob Stevenson is almost recovered. And then there's been a trade between Buffalo and Pittsburgh. Bob Murdoch goes to the Penguins for Kim Claxon. Small trade. All right, we have a day off, and then we're going to be hosting the Kings. That uh, I believe that's the our last win was against them. All right, suspension over for McTavish. He, he is back in the lineup for the Bruins. All right, Bob Bourne extends his assist streak to eight games. He had two assists against the Pittsburgh Penguins. Good game for George Ferguson. He had three goals and an assist against the Islanders. Real Cloutier's point streak ended at 13 games. Uh, he was held scoreless against the Jets, so that means that that crazy goal streak he had is over as well. Bill Derlago extends his goal streak to six games with a goal against the Colorado, Colorado Rockies. Memorable game for Charlie Simmer in that game. Our old pal had a hat trick, three goals. Rob Ramage is starting to feel better. Bob Stevenson is feeling better. Darren Veitch is feeling better. That's good. That's good. All right, the Kings are in town. They are 10, 29, and 4 now. They are still ninth in the conference. We are 1 and 2 against them. We did win against them not too long ago. That was our last win. So we're not doing too hot over here. See if we can beat them this time. Richard Brother is going to be in net for the Kings. Gilles Gilbert in net for the Waiters. Go, Waiters, go. A 5 2 victory for the Waiters. All right, a nice win for us. Oh, yeah, we outshot the Kings 33 to 18. Bo Berglund was the first out of the game. He had three assists. Jordi Douglas was the second star with a goal and an assist. And Paul Coffey was the third star with his first two NHL goals so he, he did not score a goal in Edmonton and he had not scored for us either so two goals for Paul Coffey his first two in the NHL uh, I'm pretty sure there's gonna be plenty more all right I, I'm gonna need to come right back I'm sorry
Right, my apologies, and I am back. All right. Okay, so we determined that Palkov he scored his first two NHL goals, and it was a 5 2 victory. So we had 8,427 people in attendance for this game. Paul Cup. Paul Coffey opened up the scoring the first period from Bo Berglund and Jordy Douglas, then Paul Coffey from Bill Bennett and Nick Fultzio. 2 0 Hartford at that point. Then Mark Renault scored on the power play unassisted. It was 3 0. Then the King scored, made it 3 1. And then Brian Baltimore scored from Bo Berglund and Greg Carroll. 4 1 Hartford after one. Oh, Blaine Stockton, our former friend with a boarding major there, he might get suspended. Uh, we also had a fight between Wolf Payment and Mike Murphy. Then in the second period, uh, Jordy Douglas made it 5-1 from Gordy, uh, Gordy Roberts and Bo Berglund. And then the King scored, it was 5-2 Hartford after two. Then nobody scored in the third and we had a 5-2 victory here in Hartford. Nick Fultzio improves at right wing. All right, good for him. Being a little bit more versatile is not going to hurt him. And now we have three days off before we host the Chicago Blackhawks again. Lots of news. Pet Boutet extends his goal streak to five games. He had a goal and an assist against the Edmonton Oilers. That was 12 straight games with a point for him. Daryl Sittler extends his assist streak to eight games. In that same game, he had two goals and an assist. Glenn Anderson back sooner rather than later. That'd be great. Rob Ramage back soon. That would also be great. Darren Veitch recovered already. Uh, would be great as well so all those day-to-day -day injuries are all seeming to be resolving very quickly red light stays on for john ogrodnik he had three goals and an assist against the flames gita point has racked up 600 points in his career he had two assists against the winnipeg jets gita point is 32 and he is a two and a half star player Pierre Mondou extends his goal streak to five games. He had a goal against the Jets. Larry Robinson extends his point streak to 12 games. He had a goal against the Jets. So a lot of people did stuff against the Jets for Montreal. Bill Barber has reached 300 goals in his career. He had a goal against the Quebec Nordiques. Bill Barber is 28 and he is a four-star player. That was 12 straight games with a point for him. And Bob Stevenson is almost recovered. Right, one more day off, and then we're playing the Blackhawks. Phil Meyer has been put on waivers by the Philadelphia Flyers, but he's 32. I'm going to let him. Well, I don't have room anyway to claim anybody. Al Smith didn't get claimed, so I, I have 50 contracts. Suspension for Andre Savard with the Buffalo Sabres. He's going to miss the next three games. Memorable night for Jim Hamilton. He had a hat-trick against the Red Wings. Rob Ramage is almost recovered. And Bob Stevenson is completely recovered. Yvon Lambert has been put on the block by Montreal. Wow. Hmm. And we have a trade proposal from Boston. Uh, they are offering us a different player for Darnassi this time. They are offering us uh, Steve Griffith. Uh, ooh. Yeah, he's very far off. I don't think that's happening. We're going to reject that. Eventually, we'll have something for Darnassi that uh, I'm going to say yes. But uh, that is not now. 
All right, so Chicago is in town. They are 22, 19, and 4. Respectable uh, record there. We are 0-1 against Chicago this season. All right, let's see if we can beat them at home. Tony Esposito is in net for Chicago. Gilles Gilberg is in net for us. And we are going to go ahead and hopefully win this game. Go Waiters go. A 6-4 victory. Look at us winning games all of a sudden. Uh, we were out shot 38 to 35. Mike Rogers was the first of the game. He had two goals and an assist. Barry Peterson was the second star with two assists. And Wolf Payment was the third star with two assists as well. 7,672 people in attendance for this game. Chicago opened up the scoring. They scored twice actually in the first period. And then we scored four unanswered goals. Uh, Mike Rogers from Mark Messi and Wolf Payment. Then Paul Coffey scored from Greg Carroll. And then Paul Coffey again. So Paul Coffey with another two goal performance from Glenn Anderson and Jordy Douglas it was 3-2 Hartford and then Mike Rogers from Mark Renault and Wolf Payment 4-2 Hartford after one it was also a fight between Jay Wells and Doug Wilson then in the second period Jordy Douglas scored on the power play from Paul Coffey and Mike Rogers made it 5-2 then Chicago scored made it 5-3 Hartford after two then in the third period Glenn Anderson scored on a power play unassisted it was 6-3 and then Chicago did score made it 6-4 but they just couldn't tie the game and then we had a Rob Ramage and Terry Ruskowski fight near the end of the game Rick McLeish has produced 300 goals uh, in his career uh, with a goal against the Boston Bruins. Rick McLeish is a 31-year-old player and he's three and a half star. Bill Barber extends his points streak to 13 games with a goal in that same game. The Rat extends his assist streak to eight games with an assist in that same game. Bob Bourne extends his assist streak to nine games with an assist against Washington. Good game for Wayne Gretzky. He had a goal and four assists against the Blues. Yeah, that's pretty good. Pat Boutet extends his point streak to 13 games with two assists against the Montreal Canadian. Larry Robinson extends his point streak to 13 games. He had a goal and an assist against the Leafs. And Daryl Sittler's assist streak ended at eight games in that same game. Same game. He was held scoreless. All right, we are in Washington to play the Caps. Washington is 17 at 24 and 4 and we are 0 and 1 against Washington this season. John Garrett is going to be in net for us. Gary Ennis in net for Washington. Go Waiters go. A 3-2 victory. Oh, looks like we're starting to put things together here. We were out shot 31 to 27 in that game. Bob Stevenson was the first star of the game. He had a goal. Jocelyn Gavremont was the second star with an assist. And Greg Carroll was the third star with an assist as well. Uh, Washington opened up the scoring in the first period. Then we scored three unanswered goals. Paul Coffey scored his fifth of the season from Greg Carroll. Then Bob Stevenson scored unassisted. And then Mark Messi from Mike Rogers and Wolf Payment. 3-1 Hartford after one. There was a fight between Gord Lane and Brian Baltimore. Then in the second period, Washington scored. It was 3-2 Hartford. And that score would stick until the end of the game. A 3-2 win on the road for the Waiters. That's very nice. Bill Barber extends his point streak to 14 games. He had two assists against the Kings. The Rat extends his SS3 to nine games. He had two assists in that same game. Pat Boutet extends his point streak to 14 games. He had two assists against the Jets. Walt McKegney had as a great game. He had a hat trick, three goals against the Jets. And Rob Ramage says, put me in. All right, he was already playing. He was playing hard. All right, looks like we have a couple of days off. Then we're back home to play the Blues again. We played the Blues at home not too long ago. Suspension over for Rick Martin. He's back in the lineup for Buffalo. Larry Robinson's point streak ended up 13 games, no points against the North Stars. Glenn Anderson on the verge of returning, and Darren Veitch is almost ready. One more day off. Bob Bourne's assist streak ended at 9 games. He didn't get a point against the Flames. And Pat Boutet extends his point streak to 15 games with a goal against the Canucks. Now, Pat Boutet did play for Hartford in that 
season, the 80-81 season in real life. Glenn Anderson is jumping at a bit, that's good. Glenn Anderson back in the lineup and he is healthy, or at least he should be. Right, and we are hosting the Blues, who are now 19, 21, and 5. Uh, we are 1 and 2 against the Blues this season. Don Beaupre is going to be a net for the Blues. Gilles Gilbert in net for us. And of course, go winners go. Another win. We are on a roll officially now. A 5-2 victory in front of our fans. We outshot St. Louis 32-21. Glenn Anderson celebrated his return to the lineup with a first star selection, a goal and an assist for him. Gordy Roberts was the second star with a goal and an assist, and Rick Aduano was the third star with a goal and an assist. 8,446 people in attendance for this game. Rick Aduano opened up the scoring in the first. It was his fifth of the season from Gordy Roberts, then Glenn Anderson from Mark Renault and Rick Aduano, and then Wilf Payment from Mark Messi and Mike Rogers. 3 nothing Hartford after one. Then in the second period, Gordy Roberts scored his 10th of the season. That was a power play goal from Paul Coffey and Wolf Payment. It was 4 0 Hartford. Then St. Louis scored 4 1 Hartford after two. St. Louis made it 4 2 in the third period, but then in an empty net, Brent Sutter scored from Bill Bennett and Glenn Anderson. It was a 5 2 victory for the Whalers. And now all of our injuries, except for Mandy Agman, are resolved. When Gretzky has a memorable game, he had four goals and two assists against the Canucks. Yeah, that's a pretty good game. Uh, that was five straight games with a goal for him. Suspension for Philadelphia's uh, André Dupont suspended seven games. Bill Barber extends his point streak to 15 games with a goal and an assist against Pittsburgh. The Rats has a streak and that at nine games he had a goal too in that same game but no assist. Uh, Andre Savard is back from suspension in Buffalo. Darren Veitch is completely recovered. In the case of the Stars missing gloves, Carol Vanne cannot find his gloves. They're gonna be in somebody's bag here in a few days. Sorry to ruin the suspense for you. Veitch, okay, he needs to be there for two more days. All right, so we have a day off, and then we're hosting the Flames. Joe Micheletti is out for five months in St. Louis, so season over. Pat Boutet's point streak ended at 15 games, was held scoreless against the Kings. Bill Barber extends his point streak to 16 games with an assist against the Minnesota North Stars. A good night for Robbie Ftarik in Philadelphia. He had five assists against the North Stars. Yeah, that's pretty good. Paul Omgren extends his assist streak to eight games with two goals and two assists in that same game. There was no stopping Ian Tornbull in that same game. Three goals and an assist. And the Islanders players are unhappy with the quality of the ice. Right, Calgary is in town, and uh, they are now 25, 16, and 6. We are 0 1 against Calgary this season. Let's beat them. Dan Bouchard is going to be in net for Calgary. We're going to have Gilles Gilbert. It looks like a Flames against Flames matchup, but that would be your eyes fooling you. No, your eyes are not fooling you. That would be the game fooling you. All right, let's see if we can get another W here. We've won, what, four or five in a row now? Oh, a 3 nothing loss. Uh, Alright, so we were out shot 33 to 31. Dan Bouchard was the first star of the game. He had 31 saves. Uh, Eric Vale was the second star with two assists. And Rick Lanz was the third star with a goal and an assist. We had 8,895 people in attendance for this game. Not a whole lot to talk about. There was a fight in the second period. Wolf Payment fought Paul Baxter, and that's about it. Nick Fultzu converts to right wing. Now we're gonna advance one more day. I'd like to remember for Anders Edberg with the Rangers, he had a hat trick against the Orders. Risto Siltanen extends his assist rate to eight games with two assists in that same game. The Kings might be looking to move Sil Apps. He has been put on the block. 
Right, we have one, two, three, four games left here in January. Uh, and we are now in Toronto to play the Leafs. Now the Leafs are 22, 18, and 7. That's good for a fifth in the conference. We are 0-1 against the Leafs this season. John Garrett is going to be a net for the Waiters. Rob Holland is going to be a net for the Maple Leafs. And of course, go Waiters, go! Yikes, a 7-2 loss on the road. So that one hurts because we had been playing well despite, you know, losing the last game. We had been playing well overall. Now that, that's a stinker. That one is like, you know, when you go to bed with a Nietzsche butt, you know, you wake up with a stinky finger. So that's a stinker. All right, so we were outshot 37 to 22 in that game. Yeah, we that's a bad game all over. Uh, Lanny McDonald was the first star of the game. He had two goals. Mel Bridgman was the second star with two assists. And Mags was the third star with two goals. Wolf Payment to open up the scoring in the first period from Mike Rogers and Gar Gordy Roberts. Then the Toronto tied the game. It was tied at one after one. Then in the second period, Toronto scored twice. It was 3-1 to one Toronto. Then Brent Sutter scored from Bill Bennett and Bob Stevenson. 3-2 to Toronto after two. There was a fight between Don Maloney and Nick Fotsu. Then the Leafs scored four unanswered goals in the third period. That killed us. We lost 17. Hope Darren Veitch is ready to come back to the lineup. Send Mark Renault down. Oh, and in that game, Daryl Sittler earned his 500th assist in his career. Two assists against us. Daryl Sittler is 30 years old. He is a four and a half star player. All right, we have four days off, and then we're going to be hosting the Colorado Rockies. Risto Siltonen's assist three candidate at eight games. Uh, didn't get a point against Minnesota. Mario Fobag is suspended in Montreal. He's going to miss seven games. God, what's wrong with all those lengthy suspensions? Bill Barber's point three candidate at 16 games. Didn't get a point against Montreal in that same game. Paul Omgren's assist three candidate at eight games. Same deal, although he did score a goal. Great night for Pierre Mondou in that same game. He had a hat trick. And Rick Martin extends his point three to 12 games. He had two goals against the Washington Capitals. All right. No one could stop Zeno Cicerelli. He had three goals and an assist against the Flames. Great night for Pierre Larouche. He had three goals and three assists against the Islanders. Rick Martin extends his point streak to 13 games with two goals and three assists in that same game. Good night for Rich Leduc with uh, Quebec. He had a hat-trick against the Kings. And memorable night for Ron Wilson in Toronto. He had a hat-trick against the Red Wings. All right, one more day off. Now we are playing the Colorado Rockies. Now the Rockies are 13, 30, and 6. And we are 1-1 one one against them this season. Let's see if we can beat our former pal. Bill Alischuk is going to be a net for Colorado. Gilles Gilbert a net for Hartford. Go, where's go? A 5-1 victory. All right, back in the W column. So the second half of the month has been a lot better for us. We outshot Colorado 41 to 20. Jordy Douglas was the first star of the game. He had three assists. Mike Rogers was the second star with two assists. And Wolf Payment scored two goals against his former team and got the third star. 8,386 people in attendance for this game. Nobody scored in the first period. Then Glenn Anderson uh, opened up the scoring in the second period from Jordy Douglas and Darren Veitch. Then Mark Messi from Bob Stevenson and Mar Mike Rogers made it 2 0. Colorado scored, it was 2-1, and then Gordy Roberts gave us a two-goal lead back from Glenn Anderson and Jordy Douglas, 3-1 Hartford after two. Then Wolf Payment scored twice in the third period, the first one on the power play from Jordy Douglas and Paul Coffey, and then Wolf Payment from Mike Rogers and Jay Wells, 5-1 Hartford is the final score. We had a fight between Bill Bennett and Don Ashby, and that was pretty much it. 
Mark Messi is injured, but he, he's going to be able to play through his injury, so we're good. Mark Messi is day to day. Rick Martin extends his point streak to 14 games. He had an assist against the Flyers. Dynamic passing leads to Productive Night for Pierre Lacroix. He had five assists against the Red Wings. All right, and another day, we have a day off, and then we're going to be hosting the Leafs. Great night for Rick Middleton. Uh, he had a goal and four assists against the Jets. All right, Toronto's in town. They are now 24 19 and 7. They just kicked our asses 7 2. Now that we're back uh, on home ice, uh, maybe we can win. That'd be great. We have not beaten the Leafs this season. Rob Allen in net again for Toronto, Gilles Gilbert in net for us, and of course, go, where does go? A 5-3 victory, look at us. We were out shot 38-28 in that one, however, Mike Rogers was the first out of the game, he had two goals and an assist, Don Marcotte was the second star with a goal, and Wolf Payment was the third star with two assists, 8,639 people in attendance. Gordy Roberts opened up the scoring in the first period from Rick Aduono and Rob Ramage. Then Bill Bennett scored his fifth of the season short-handed from Mike Rogers and Jay Wells. And then Mike Rogers from Paul Coffey and Wolf Payment. 3 nothing Hartford after one. In the second period, Mike Rogers scored from Jordy Douglas and Wolf Payment. Then Glenn Anderson from Rick Aduono and Chuck Clefley. It was 5 nothing Hartford at that point. And then Toronto scored, made it 5-1 Hartford after two. There was a fight between Jay Wells and Jerry Butler, and then Wolf Payment and Walt McKechnie. And then in the third period, Toronto scored two goals, but it was too little too late. We won 5-3. Some more face punching between Jay Wells and Pat Boutet. Then Rob Ramage fought Joe Quenville, and then Wolf Payment fought Pat Boutet. So Pat Boutet, two fights in the third period for Toronto. And that leads us to our very last game of the month here against the Buffalo Sabres. There was no stopping Ben Wilson. He had three goals and an assist against the Colorado Rockies. I don't, don't care about that. Mike Liot extended uh, with St. Louis uh, for four more years. And there's a trade rumor surrounding Al Smith. We'll see if we can get something for him. All right, last game of the month. Buffalo is in town. They have a very good 28, 16, and 5 record. They are third in the conference, and we are 1-1 one one against the Sabres this season. Don Edwards is going to be in net for Buffalo. John Garrett is going to be in net for us. And, of course, go Waiters go. And we end the month with a nice 4-2 victory over a better team. We were out shot 37 to 32. Paul Coffey was the first out of the game. He had a goal and an assist. Uh, is that Rick Selling? Yeah, Rick Selling at the second star with two assists. And Greg Carroll was the third star with a goal and an assist. 8,172 people in attendance for the game. Greg Carroll opened up the scoring in the first period. That was his 10th of the season, short-handed from Gordy Roberts and Bill Bennett. Then Darren Veitch scored his fifth from Chuck Lefley and Greg Carroll. 2 nothing Hartford after one. With Payment and Klim Kim Claxon face punched each other in the first period as well. Then in the second period, Buffalo scored twice to tie the game, but then with Payment scored his 20th of the season from Paul Coffey and Matty Agman, 3 2, Hartford after two. There was also a fight between Nick Fotu and Craig Ramsey. Then finally in the third period, Paul Coffey scored in an empty net from Bob Stevenson and Brent Sutter, 4 2, Hartford, the final score. All right, so we have quite a few things to look at here. Uh, we are off today. Uh, Rick Martin extends his point streak to 15 games. He had a goal and an assist against us. Uh, Chicago's uh, Harco is suspended, so Miles uh, Harco is going to miss three games with a suspension. Andre Saint Laurent with the Kings is suspended. He's going to miss two games. Guy Lafleur lights the lamp. He had four goals and an assist against the Kings. Zeno Cicerelli extends his goal streak to five games with a goal and two assists against the Rangers. The 
Top selling Hartford Weathers jerseys Wilf Payment, John Garrett, Mark Messi, Gordy Roberts, and Darren Veitch. Alright, development report. Let's see here. Denisia getting open, plus one. Okay. Dave Poulain. Oh, God, that hurts. Dave Poulain is getting better, but at fighting. Uh, Mark Renault. Okay, that's good. Greg Carroll, leadership. Paul Coffey, puck handling and positioning. That's awesome. Brent Sutter, balance, puck handling and defensive ready. That's also good. Jay Wells, determina determination. Mike Stoddard's team player, Anders Carlson, face-offs. And John Newberry, agility and face-offs. And a lot of guys lost some points, but it's a lot of older guys. Not all of them, but like like Bernie Johnston is young. All right. Top saying jerseys in the NHL. Mike Milbury. Oh, dear God. Where are we going? I'm going to delete that. I'm a little ashamed that I read that, actually. NHL honors Edmonton, uh, Wayne Gretzky, and Paul Harrison are the players of the month in the NHL. All right, um, all right, so kind of a weird month, right? We, we've been losing a lot at the start of the month and then near the end of the month, we've started to win a lot more games uh, to a point that we leapfrogged the Pig Pittsburgh Penguins. They were six points ahead of us at one point during the stream. Now we're two points ahead, so we've been playing really well at the end of the month. Uh, we are now 21, 29, and 1. That's still not a great record, but that's better. We're, we're threading in the right direction. And for the most part, we are also healthy, so that helps. Uh, well, okay, let's take a look here. So the Kings are back to being the worst team in the league. So sorry, JT Dutch, the Kings are just not in it. Since I took Charlie Simmer away, man, they, they, they just can't do it anymore. All right, we're gonna go ahead and uh, take a look here at our stats. All right, our best player is Wolf Payment with 54 points in 51 games. That's pretty good, actually. So that was all with us. I got him at the start of the season. So over a point per game, I'm pretty happy with that. <coughs> I wasn't sure if, if he was going to be able to put it together. Now the season's not over yet, but so far so good. Uh, Mark Messi is 49 points in 47 games. Of course, a lot of those points were acquired with Edmonton. Mike Rogers, 48 points in 51 games. Jordy Douglas doing pretty good, 35 in 43. Gordy Roberts, 32 in 51. Paul Coffey, 29 in 31. So Paul Coffey is almost a point per game. He just lost a lot of time due to injury. He's a point per game with us, 17 points in 17 games. All right, so we're looking pretty good, actually, uh, as far as what we look like here. The points, we're starting to, you know, put things together. We're still not scoring a whole lot, but we're scoring more than we used to. So that's good. Uh, and then in the entire league, we have... Mike Bussey is already at 51 goals, and we're at the start of February. Uh, Wayne Gretzky has 59 assists, and the best scorer is Wayne Gretzky with 99 points. Remember, Mike Bussey had, what, a 8, 12, something like that, point lead on Gretzky at the end of the last stream, and now he's Gretzky has 3 more points, 99 points for number 99. All right. Oh, and Bill Bennett is now officially the league leader in short-handed goals with three. All right, so there. We are. We have the leader at something, which is good. All right, we're going to go ahead and save the game. Next time out is going to be February. You know what that means for those of you that have been following me for a while. Uh, that means that, you know, when I start the stream next time, I'm going to have all of my contract offers here. And then everybody that I'm not bringing back is going to be put on the trading block. And we're going to see what we can do with maybe Al Smith. See if he has a little bit of value. I don't think he has a whole lot of value. I don't think we're going to get, you know, a very good player. But maybe we can get a young guy that could develop... Uh, into a role somewhat in the organization. 
All right, folks, so that's going to be it for me today. I have to go and make dinner, but uh, I do want to thank you for tuning in. And uh, as usual, if you're catching this on YouTube, you liked what you saw, you know what to do. Uh, but for now, it's ARG out. So see ya, folks, later. Bye.